Senator Dave Senjum, thank you for joining us today. Well, it's good to be here. Good to have you as always. Now, it's fair to say that these past few months have been challenging for the Senate Republican Caucus. How do you intend to inject stability and transparency back into the Senate Republican Caucus? Well, I'm, I'm not so sure we all, you know, we weren't always stable. Uh, we, we, we certainly were. We're, we're a, a caucus just like any other caucus. We're a family. Uh, we all uh, care about each other. We all pull for each other. Uh, even through the roughest of roads that uh, obviously that we've been through here now, uh, uh, there's still, you know, a lot of, you know, certainly affection and understanding. Uh, uh, certainly uh, there's, uh, you know, like, like what happened, is this real? But, but we're going to move through this and, 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 and look to the future. That's, uh, that's why they sent us and that's why we came. So we'll, we'll move through this. Uh, you know, every family and caucus is a family, maybe from time to time has difficult uh, situations which arise. We did. I think we worked through it uh, and are moving forward. So what do you think the public's perception of the caucus is? And do you think it's negative or do you think it's still positive? Well, I'd like, to, I'd like to say, you know, I think it's, I think it's positive. I think, uh, you know, I, I would view our session last year as uh, certainly, a, you know, shut down aside. I mean, I, th I think we stood for what we uh, stand for, and that's uh, trying to limit government to try to, you know, take a look at government and reform it in some areas. We had some certainly major cutbacks in, in certain areas, which we had to do, I think, in view of a $5 billion deficit. So, uh, you know, it was tough work. But I think we did the tough work. I think people respect us for it. I think we're rewarded for that now that we look at a nearly a billion dollar surplus as opposed to a five billion dollar deficit. Uh, uh, we'll just take credit for that because it's real. It happened under our watch. Uh, it's perhaps fragile, but for the moment uh, we're happy about it and we're going to accept it as our work. Now let's get back to you. What are some of the key differences you think there will be in leading a majority caucus as opposed to being the minority leader? Well, certainly from the standpoint of the, uh, I'm already evidence of uh, the fact, uh, just by virtue of looking at my schedule, that uh, there is uh, a lot more to this majority leader thing than, than there was in the former, and I certainly uh, respect and was humbled by the fact that I was elected minority leader, but uh, the pressure's on you. The, the, frankly, all the decisions are right here uh, relative, relative to, you know, certainly caucus decisions, policy decisions uh, going forward. You virtually set the agenda for the Senate, and thus for the state of Minnesota, certainly working with my speaker friend, uh, Kurt Zeller, Zellers. But uh, so, it, you, you know, you're, you're at the tip of the spear. And uh, when you're in the minority, you're, you're on the spear, but you're not at the tip, and uh, that's the difference. Have there been any surprises? I know it's fresh, but thus far, have you been overly surprised by anything that sprung up? No, I, but, but I kiddingly say uh, I didn't realize this position was maybe as important as it is. That's maybe the humble nature of myself. Uh, you know, everybody got a job on that certain Tuesday, or a lot of people did, including myself, a new one. Uh, I didn't realize, perhaps, that, uh, and I knew it was important, to, you know, take it seriously in that vein, but uh, I didn't really realize how important other people thought it was, and uh, both from a standpoint of a lot of well-wishers, uh, certainly a lot of media uh, occasions, and, and on and on. So it, it, it's a humbling thing to, to go back home and to be told that you are now amongst uh, you know, with the governor, the speaker, and myself, you know, the top three political leaders in Minnesota. Uh, you know, I kind of wonder how did I get here? Am I qualified? Can we do this job? But we will. So give me some of your expectations as, my, as majority leader. Well, it's, it's all about what can we do in the next couple of months now to, to build on what we've already done in terms of jobs and the economy and, and, and a growing prosperity for Minnesota. What can we do to build on that and, and carry forward? I think that has to be our, that has to be our mission. That has to be our focus. If it's not, uh, a lot of folks out uh, in, in, in all of Minnesota are not going to be well served. So, so let's let's make sure that we have a growing and prosperous Minnesota. If we can, if we can do that incrementally, improve it each year, each time, uh, we're going to have a a better Minnesota, and, and that's our goal. Are there any expectations that you think are placed on you? as majority leader and what skills do you have to perhaps face some of those expectations? <laughs> well, certainly to lead the caucus uh, and, and then, you know, do I have the skills? I guess time will tell, uh, but we'll work on that. I mean, every, every, every chapter in life is a, is a new learning experience and you grow in it. And uh, even though I've so-called been around for nine years, uh, this is a brand new adventure and I'm going to have to grow in it myself. And, uh, 
and acclimate and understand and, 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 and just with the help of my leadership team, and I will tell you, by, I'm just thrilled with that new leadership team that we have. They're just uh, three freshmen that are just, that are just fence posts. They're just great. And of course, we've got Senator Claire Roebling and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, who's the other one? I'm sorry. Ortman. <laughs> Ortman, Julianne Ortman. Ortman, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, that are that have been around for a while. They have that perspective, and so we're uh, we're good, and we're going to do a good job. So, Senator, with the 2012 legislative session quickly approaching, let's jump ahead to its conclusion. What do you think the message will be? A strong and, and growing and prosperous Minnesota, and a Republican caucus that's taking us in, in those directions. That's 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 what our message will be, uh, as sure as I sit here right now. Uh, we're and, and, and that will certainly be the, the, the message that we carry into the election in 2012, that we're here for a, a strong and growing and prosperous Minnesota. And we're going to do that uh, working to the extent government can with our private sector businesses and, uh, and doing everything that we can. And what do you hope your legacy jobs in is? Minnesota. Oh, just, uh, you know, a guy that stepped in when, uh, when he thought he needed to and, uh, and, uh, and, and did a good job. We'll see. Others can judge that. Uh, I'm not here for a legacy. I'm just here to, to do the work. Okay, Senator Senjum, thanks for your perspective on your new position. Congratulations. And of course, we'll track the session closely. Good. Thank you so much, Julie.